Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm your host for today's episode. Joining me is Aaron Jurgens, a specialist in livestock facility cleaning and sanitation with Jurgens Inc. Aaron, thank you very much for coming on the podcast and sharing your expertise with us today. Let's go ahead and start with an introduction for the audience, who you are and what you do. Hi. Um, yeah, my name is Aaron Jurgens. I'm, uh, I'm from Carroll, Iowa. Uh, my family's been involved in the livestock industry since the 40s. You know, my grandfather came here and worked with my dad and grandfather and my family. And, um, and throughout the years of transitioning to doing uh, livestock, you know, cleaning, you know, livestock facility cleaning, it's been a really good business. I've been involved in it. I mean, pretty much for my whole life, you know what I mean? From uh, picking up a power washer when I was five, helping dad out in the, the farrowing house to transition to washing the, the, the farrowing units, to washing nurseries, the finishers myself, and to uh, having a pretty good crew where we uh, we do it pretty consistently on a weekly basis. And, you know, even given week, I'm, I'm washing 50, 60,000 different uh, livestock spaces. And uh, we do do a pretty good job day in and day out. So it's it's been it's been great. So and Carol's a great place to be. And, you know, Iowa, there's a consistent workflow and, um, you know, people hire me to get it done. And, uh, you know, day after day, uh, we, we get things clean and, and take care of business. So. Excellent. Well, um, let's dive right into it. You know, we're, we're in the winter now, um, Aaron, and obviously our disease challenges are, are ramping up every week. It seems like, um, I know that, uh, uh, maybe the cleanup is more important right now, but the expectations are generally the same. Could you kind of talk through, you know, what your process is? So if uh, if Clayton's farm wants to hire you to wash my pig barn at the end of the turn, what does that look like for you? And if it's a you know 4,000 head pig barn, kind of when do you come in and start washing? How much time at each step? And when do you, when do you declare it done and, and head off to the next job? Yeah, and the, the process is pretty easy. You know, I mean, everything's scheduled out. And um, so usually when the last pigs leave, you know what I mean, the, the caretaker, the barn owner, um, tears down the barn and sets it all up. And then they usually run an automatic soak cycle for a day or two. It depends on when the pigs are coming back in. Usually if you get a day or two of soaking, it kind of helps get that hard pack up or any just any built up filth um, going. And the, the, the easier it is to wash, the better we are at getting clean. And at the end, it's always spotless, but it just helps our guys out. So you know, knocking the feeders over, getting the water bars down, you know what I mean? Just making sure the soakers work and getting a good soak. And then we come in depending on water pressure. Sometimes there's only enough water for one guy. Sometimes there's enough water for three guys, you know what I mean? So, but you got to have good water pressure to get a good job done. And then I like, for example, 4,000 facility, you know, one guy would take roughly three, four days. You can wash, one guy can safely wash 1,200 spaces a day on a finishing barn. And the same thing with the nursery, 1,200 spaces a day. Um, but if you get two guys there, a 4,000 head finisher will take about two days. So, and they come in and then, you know, get everything washed, get the feeders washed and all the organic material is going to be gone. You know what I mean? So, and there's, there's some things like, you know, you have to hand clean controllers, electrical, you know, obviously you don't want the big machines blasting that. So um, we can do that as a step. A lot of times owners, they come in with their Lysol wipes and wipe all that stuff down anyways, because, uh, you know, they don't want, uh, you know, when you got a $10,000 controller, some of these ones are pretty crazy. You don't need a you know, me coming in and, and blasting away on it. You know what I mean? So those are the phone calls I like to avoid. Um, you know, hey, my controller's, you know, a little... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, organic material's going to be all gone. Feeder's clean, curtain's clean, everything's clean. You know, we get down and, you know, there's, there's you know, we always say clean's clean. There's no like if, ands, or buts. You know what I mean? Like it's just clean's clean. You know what I mean? So you that's where you got to be, so. Good. So we soak the barn, we wash the barn, and now it's clean. Next step, sanitation. Talk us through what you do there. Who picks the disinfectant? How do you apply it? All that stuff. Um, each different integrator or even just pig owner has their different, you know, they have their different SOP for what they want to use for disinfectant. And they know what germs are in their herd. So they they have tests done on, on what their best, um, their best disinfectant is. And, you know, some of it comes down to cost. You know what I mean? Some of it comes down to just their preference. Some of them are aligned with different companies. You know what I mean? So, but whatever they pick to use is what I use. They usually have it on site. And if not, you know, I, I bring some around. You know what I mean? There's there's Vercons, there's Synergize, there's multiple different companies. And they're all great disinfectants. They all do the same thing. We want the bacteria, viruses, you know, gone. And my main thing is, it's that, that's why in the fall here, it seems like it's just disease challenges. So much hard. It's hard to get things dry. You know what I mean? Like I always tell people, like right when I get in my pickup the next morning and the the water from my boots doesn't dry on the floor mat, that's when I know we're gonna have trouble. So if uh, your floor mat's not dry in the morning, you're just gonna be tracking stuff around. It's the same thing with pigs. You know what I mean? It has to be dry. So dry dries your friend. You know what I mean? So 
that, that's where we're at. So if you can get a barn dry and then put your disinfectant on, I mean, you're doing yourself a lot of good. You know what I mean? I just, I try to keep things warmed up and um, get things dry, get the nooks and crannies dry, you know, clean, clean, and then dry, and then apply your disinfectant on and just making sure you get a good coat. You know what I mean? So just everything needs to be hit. You know what I mean? So that's why a lot of times you use a foaming application tip. And that way you can see where it is. And that foam allows it to wrap around everything and get the top, bottom, sides, all that needs to be done. So it, the, the reality is with, with sanitation, right? 99% is not good enough. 99%, you are still going to have that 1% infect a pig. And that pig will make enough bacteria or virus to expose the entire population. Oh, yeah. Nope. It, it, there's no shortcuts. And I mean, with, I mean... The pig industry is so competitive. You know what I mean? I just remember talking to my dad back in the 80s and 90s. You either had to be really good at production or really good at marketing. You know what I mean? But like today, you got to be perfect every day, all day. You know what I mean? You got to be good at production. You got to be good at cleaning. You got to be good at marketing. You got to be good. You got to be good at everything. I mean, you got to be an expert on all things to be successful in this industry. It's not, there's no luck in it anymore. You know what I mean? Like I was talking to my dad last night. He's like, back in the 80s, the only thing you needed to do to make money on hogs is more hogs. You know what I mean? You know, you need more hogs. It doesn't matter. You know I mean, just, if they were sick, you just need more hogs. You made more money. But like today, I mean, you got to have a healthy herd. You got to have a good marketing program. You got to have a good transportation. You have had good cost structure. You got to have good management. I mean, everything needs to be top notch to survive in this business. And it, cleanliness comes out of the. I mean, the most unwanted job is loading and washing. You know what I mean? And that's the stuff that, you know, it just like it's just the washing. But it's like that's almost you know it's a very important part of the step. You know what I mean? So it's just it needs to be clean. It's not fun. It's not glamorous, but it needs to be done. It needs to be done right. And it needs to be done right every single time. When I think about my grandpa, I always think about, because um, my, my grandpa was a diversified farmer in Southern Missouri. He would be floored by what we have today. And to your point, right? We have the tools to clean well. We have the tools to sanitize well. And we have the diagnostic tools to assess, are we doing a good job or not? And he would be, number one, just amazed by that. But number two, he would be floored by the amount of, of people in the industry that don't use those tools. Or to your point, right, they have the tools available, but the schedule is the most important thing. And there's no flexibility of the schedule. We're going to put a square peg in a round hole no matter what. And then we get very frustrated when we get bad results. But the tools are all there. And it's a very timely discussion, Aaron. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on to the show and sharing your feedback uh, to Invite me back anytime so I can, uh, we can talk all days about pigs. So it's, uh, if you want to go for three hours or 10 minutes on Washington, we can, we can talk pigs all day. So I will take you up on that. Um, to our audience, uh, thank you very much for listening to today. And I thank you in advance for listening to the next one we have Aaron on. Um, if, if you haven't visited us at swinehealthblackbelt.com, please go check it out for this uh, podcast as well as all the other ones we've done. And subscribe to the podcast so you hear this one as well as uh, future iterations when we have Aaron come back. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next week. Hey everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. Mm-hmm.